Welcome to Budget Outlaws. Today we're doing belts and rollers and water pump on the black 1984 early 944 Porsche that has been sitting for 20 years. We'll be doing a water pump update that includes a different roller, water pump, and not to, not to miss the timing cover mod that nobody seems to mention is necessary when doing this update. Did you see the opening picture? There's a reason we didn't start this car when we bought it. It would have broken the belt, bent the valves, and maybe more. Thank goodness we were listening to our inner selves. The recommended interval for changing belts on a 944 is between 30 and 60,000 miles, or 5 to 10 years. De yeah, I made that up, but it's somewhat close. The, the main thing is, this one is overdue, long overdue, based on years, if nothing else. Well, let's get started. I started by removing the air filter, the timing cover, and a few odds and ends to give me some room to work and check things out. Well, not knowing the full history of the car, I wanted to confirm that everything is timed correctly. The first thing we need to do is set the timing to top dead center and lock the flywheel. So to do that, we'll bring it up to the timing mark on the cam gear, and then look for the timing mark on the crankshaft. Well, I couldn't see it. And since the flywheel mark was so rusted and dim, I went old school and pulled the number one spark plug. Well, I actually pulled all of them. I used a soft but solid object to feel the piston come up and find top dead center. Then I looked again. Indeed, the mark was there, but it was very dim due to the rust buildup on the flywheel. So the next thing to do is to lock it in place using a flywheel lock. But I sent my lock down with my 944 turbo to my son's house. So I could wait a couple days and I could get a another one for 50 bucks or I could just make my own well guess what I did 45 minutes later I had a lock so now that I had the crankshaft locked in place I began disassembly the crankshaft bolt needs to come off so with the lock in place it's just a matter of leverage it's 155 foot pounds of torque so after pulling it all apart including the belts the rollers the back cover the water pump and careful on those water pump bolts they can be corroded and break off causing much pains well I got lucky on that one well with everything off I cleaned up the gasket surfaces I also noticed an oil seepage on the lower balance shaft seal so I ordered the seal kit and then I kept moving on I installed the upgraded water pump using the bolts that were supplied from by 944 online the back timing cover needs a modification to fit over this new water pump. The updated water pump has a belt shield that the early water pump doesn't have. And at first I just drilled holes for the mounting studs for the new water pump since there really wasn't any description showing how to make this modification. But the updated timing belt roller rubbed on the back cover. The early rollers are much smaller than the updated belt rollers. So I kept modifying and cutting out a triangle that would ensure an interference-free fit. I've got clearance all the way around that pulley, clearance all the way around that boss, and then on this boss, alright, so I noticed some seepage around that bottom seal, so I'm changing both the seals here. Before I go and order them, I want to see what the shape of the surfaces that they ride on. So that's just a matter of jamming a screwdriver in on the one side and peeling it out. Not as easy as it sounds, but it works. So after prying the seal out, taking the woodruff key out, And then prying this, I don't know what they call that, that's a race of some sort. It's really the surface that the seal rides on. And if you can catch a ridge with your finger, you can pretty much assume that it's bad. 
The good part is that they're all available. So we'll order that kit. That'll include that seal. There's some wafer thin, um, I forget what they call them, but there's wafer thin seals that go in here that they ride on their Teflon thing. So that all comes with the kit. So we'll do this seal down here and this. Next, my seal kit came in and I installed the upper and lower bound shaft seals along with new races that are su is supplied with the kit. And Pelican Parts has this kit. So the upper driver side balance shaft seal is 47 millimeters and rotates clockwise the direction the belt will goes. The lower 48 millimeter seal rotates counterclockwise and it's, these must be put in the right position or they will leak. Okay, so for the lower pulley, the O has to go through the square or rectangular hoop, uh, opening, should I say, and uh, not the alternate way, the round opening. That's for the top pulley. So this is the way the top pulley would look. This is the way the bottom pulley looks. And it's right there. And then you're looking for the back side of the, the gear, which is right there. I reinstalled the balance shaft gears and torqued them to 34 foot pounds using my homemade tool. Okay. So we're testing my uh, fancy dancy sprocket holder tool. good on that one. 35 foot-pounds on that rocket. That's what the tool looks like. It's a it's a jewel of workmanship. And then here's a couple other options to get that job done. And I like the 90 degree long handle needle nose pliers from Harbor Freight. They fit the holes and hold tight and with slight modifications still have other uses. Well then I was finally ready to install belts and rollers. Here we're looking at the belt routing diagram and for info like this I recommend clarksgarage.com. I installed the timing belt around the crank gear and the cam gear, the new tensioner and the new updated belt roller. And I kept an eye on the cam mark to make sure it didn't move once the belt tightened up. Then I did an initial tension and moved on to the balance belt. The balance belt also has a tensioner and roller to replace. Again, looking at the diagram, route the belt over and around and under and through. And then use the tensioner at the bottom passenger side to give the belt an initial tension. I generally use a twist method for these initial tensions. Check the marks again to make sure they didn't move when tightened. Remember the O isn't the mark, it's the notch in the back of each of the balance shaft gears. Once you have confirmed the timing marks are correct for both the timing belt and balance shaft belt, and that the tension is sufficient, you can unlock the flywheel and rotate the engine at least two turns of the crankshaft. Go slow at first, and if you encounter any resistance, stop. Bring the cam gear up to top dead center again, and then check the marks. If it all looks good, it's time to set the final tension. And there are several methods. Using the Porsche factory tool, there's a Cricut tool that I don't really recommend, Arnworks tool, and the old twist half a turn for the cam belt and one turn for the balance shaft belt. But this is somewhat subjective due to the finger strength. I've used all of these versions with success. I picked the Arnworks tool for quality, price, and accuracy. I've been using various versions of this tool over the years, and this one, 920X version 6.1, is certainly the best. So, as I suspected, the uh, camshaft is a little tight, but I need to take the tension off the 
off that side of the belt. So that's the next step. That's how they got the thing in their place. Using the instructional videos from Ironworks, I set up the tool on the timing belt and adjusted the temperature to the specs as instructed. Then I moved on to the balance shaft belt. Okay, so we're at the point of uh, uh, tensioning the balance shaft belt. You notice that the, the, the gear is just a little bit off. All the slack is on this side. But I wanted to show you this, is that there is a possibility of tightening this belt by turning it to the left as well as turning it to the right. And you can see the difference in what it does to that lower connection of this. So it makes it much less likely to slip, and that was the intended direction. So in other words, the, you don't want to do counterclockwise. You want, you want your tightening to be clockwise on this lower balance shaft bolt. Yeah, this was one of my faux pas in the in the past. Learn by making mistakes. So there's a snub tension on it. Then we'll set that in a minute. I want to go ahead and put the gauge on it and set that tension. So Ironworks has a full instructions on how to use their tensioning tool. It's on their website and there's a link here and there's also one in the description. Make sure you read it and watch the videos real careful. That does a great job. And then we're going to also do a little diagram here on how to do the feeler gauge and set up that roller. So, uh, and we'll go into it a little bit in this next segment. So now that we have the balance shaft um, tensioned and the roller is torqued and it's still checked correctly. The last thing to set is this pulley, the idler pulley for the balance shaft. And that is done with a feeler gauge, half a millimeter feeler gauge. And you basically just slide it in and out. Now it's just a tad snug. Okay, well, it's time to put the rest of it back together. I installed the new radiator hoses, accessory belts, as well as oil and filter change, trans fluid change. Connected the wires up to the oil pressure switch that I had to disconnect because they were wrapped around the old water pump. And I also changed out the radiator fan temperature switch that was leaking. I reinstalled the spark plugs, installed the cap and rotor, and connected up the spark plug wires. Finally, I'm ready to start the car for the first time in 20 years. Wank, wank, wank. No go. It seems like there's some gremlins still hidden in this beauty. No, the belts are fine, and there's something else keeping it from starting. Find out on the next episode. Same bat time, same bat channel. Doo -doo 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 -doo.